Hey everyone, I am here at Avalon for Erica's birthday, and I'm here with one of the, my favorite people to watch online, by the way. Oh, wow, that's awesome. I didn't even yes, know that. I did. Thank I know. Kay, I didn't know Caleb Nation was going to be here until I saw Ricardo's tweet, and I knew Caleb Nation was going to be here, so I'm excited. That's crazy. I just actually, uh, they told me a few minutes ago, oh, this guy wants to talk to you on camera, and so I went and looked you up, and I've seen your stuff before. Oh, thank you. And then we found out that we were both at the same movie premiere, at the yeah. New Moon film premiere. All the Twilights, yeah. On the red carpet, and we didn't know each other, and it's yeah. been years, and now we do. I know. Rob and Kristen. That was crazy. It's weird. It's weird it being gone. It was such a huge part of my life that it's like well, weird. Me too. I ran yeah. TwilightGuy.com. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like back in the day, that was my first real introduction, and I put posted my YouTube videos. That's yeah. how people found me through yeah. Twilight. I got like 10 million hits. Yeah. It was in my picture was in Entertainment Weekly, and so Twilight did a lot for me. Are you? Is it like bittersweet? Or are you kind of like ready to find like the new thing to obsess over? Well, for me, it, it kind of happened at just the right time because just around the time that Twilight was starting to kind of fade out in its huge popularity, yeah. my own stuff was starting to take hold Absolutely. of my life too much. And I didn't have time to be promoting someone else's book series and movies. Yeah. And I was doing my own book series and my yeah, own yeah. videos and stuff. So. Is there is there anything out there right now, though, that you're like fan guying over that you're like, if I had the free time, I would do a whole like oh, segment on Hunger Games. Hunger Games is definitely the biggest thing right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of stuff that, that might be coming up. Hunger Games is definitely the the crazy obsession right now. Have you read the book? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I read the books too. Love those books. How do we how do we like who they've selected to play the characters? Do we think they picked it right on or so whenever they uh, they first announced the casting, I was one of the people that was online saying how terrible it was. I was saying, you're ruining this movie. This is the worst cast possible. This is this, everything looks terrible. The trailers and everything, I hated it all. And I finally went to see it just because I felt like I had to. And I cr almost, I cried. Yeah. I, not full on crying, but like tears yeah. whenever that, that certain scene happened that I don't want to yeah. spoil. And I went out of there a completely converted person. And yeah. that's how good the casting was and that whole movie was, is that it converted me, who thought it was going to be terrible, into pretty much the biggest fan of Hunger Games ever. I, you know what? I read the book, so I was very I was very protective too. And I think they did a good job. Yeah. I think Jennifer, I think the reason Jennifer Lawrence was so good is because when you read the books, she wasn't this warm, bubbly. And if they would have picked like an actress who was like warm and bubbly, it would have just been weird. Yeah. And for me, it's the reason why I didn't like Jennifer Lawrence at first was because I thought she was I thought she was too attractive for Katniss. I yeah. thought I, all the pictures that I'd seen were of like her modeling shots and fashion photo shoots yeah. and I thought that's not Katniss at all. Yeah. And she owned that character. Like all of them they just owned their character so well. Yeah. And it was nuts. I loved it. The second one's coming out. You ready uh, for it? I'm so excited. It's it's uh, that's the movie I'm most excited about right now. I was excited for The Hobbit, and now that The Hobbit's done, now I'm excited for the next Hunger Games movie. What, what, you know, because you do a lot of different stuff, not just YouTube videos, you, you do stuff all over. What, what kind of is, like, are you driving and you get a thought? You sit down at, like, a, at an office and plan? Like, how does your day with what you do go on? Well, I kind of, I work in seasons, in a way, which is really weird for writers. It's half of the year, I'm a writer, and I'm so obsessed with writing, and I start writing at 5 p.m. at night, and I write till 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning, yeah. and I just write on my books and plot and ideas, and I do that for six months. Then, after I finish, then all of a sudden it's YouTube season. Right now yeah. it's YouTube season. YouTube season is slowly starting to end right now. Yeah. And then I just do YouTube videos, and I make shows, and I make websites, and series, and all sorts of stuff, and it's kind of... It all kind of feeds into each other, yeah. but I just play off of it depending on what season I feel like. Is it kind of all like your babies so you don't have a favorite or is it one of those things where there's something that you do that you you enjoy more? Maybe not more then, but it's just something right now that you're into. It's what you love to do. Um, what do I? It, it, it's all kind of all in one because I do so many different different things that might like each of them is a different job. It's a YouTuber, it's an author, it's a blogger, it's, it's all these different things. And when I combine them all together, I just kind of do a little bit of each one every day, pretty yeah. much. It's like, I'll go blog, I'll take some selfies, I'll go do a video, <laughs> I'll write out a video, I'll write a note for my next book, yeah. stuff like that. And you just kind of combine it all into one thing, which is, it, it's really special about, I guess, having a followers that are on the internet is yeah. because it's I don't have to fit into a specific mold yeah. anymore especially with the way the internet is now I don't have to just be an author and like live up in a high tower and, and like write on my typewriters yeah. like <laughs> making my crazy faces drinking coffee yeah. all the time and also with youtubers I don't have to be vlogging everything that I do yeah. I don't have to be I don't just have to be 
ridiculous and crazy. And well, I try to do my hair up, but I don't have to have the huge. I don't have to fit in the image. Yeah, yeah. I can be a little bit of both of what I like and do it the way I want. I can be an author and I can be a YouTuber at the same time. Is there anyone that you look up to a lot? Like, and, and whenever you're like stuck or something, you're kind of like go to them and you're just you know, look at their stuff and it inspires you. Yeah, it oh a lot. Uh, Ryan Seacrest is probably my biggest inspiration ever. My actually before Ryan Seacrest, my biggest inspiration was this guy named Kid Craddock. He was this radio show host for Kid Craddock in the morning. And uh, since I was a very very little kid, I would listen to his morning show in the morning, and it inspired me with the idea that I don't have to be crass, I don't have to be stupid. I can be whoever I want to be and be a positive person and still reach millions of people because that's what Kid Craddock did yeah. and Kid Craddock he sadly passed away last month he was my biggest I, I was just crushed I never got to meet him yeah. but I felt like I knew him all my life yeah. and he was pretty much the biggest inspiration he actually passed away while he was at his own charity event for kids it's and it's terrible. like it, it's terrible but at the same time it, it's, it's like he had this way and I actually wrote like a whole like a diary entry of some yeah. sorts about how he affected my life and it's very interesting how in all of his shows, Kid's special ability was he would always end on a perfect, hilarious note right before commercial. And it seemed like he did the same thing with his life. He ended his life, his life, it wrapped up in exactly the perfect way, doing exactly what he wants to be remembered for. Everything was perfect. And that was very much Kid Craddock. And he's my biggest inspiration. In and then lastly, what are you most excited about right now? Is there something you're working on or something that's keeping you busy that you're just like, this is me right now, like investing your time into? Oh, uh, I have a thing with secret pro. I have a very secret project that I'm working on right now, which has something to do with YouTube and something with, with other stuff that people will see if they look at twitter.com slash Caleb Nation. That's yeah. my account. But my big thing right now is uh, my book that just came out in January. It's called Harkin, and it's a conspiracy thriller story set in California. And I wrote on that for three years. It just came out in January, and it's, it's so much fun. I'm writing the second book in the series right now. All right, so get the book. Follow him on Twitter, go to his YouTube, and thank you for talking with us. Yeah, Are you excited so about the show? You oh, yeah. Show? Oh, so excited. It's awesome. Yeah, Ricardo, who you know, is uh, hosting. He's hosting so. Tila. I just got a selfie yeah. with Tila. Tila and I have been talking on, online for forever and finally that. met in person. So. All right, you guys. It's Caleb Nation here. That's Caleb with a K. Yep. Uh, don't spell it with a C. But uh, Caleb with a K. Caleb Nation, follow him on everything and uh, buy his book and stuff. Yeah. yeah, go buy it. It's 99 cents on Amazon right now. Yes, all right, uh, come on. It's cheaper than a taco. A taco. It's an iTunes song. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, you guys. It's here, Caleb Nation at Avalon.